Good morning, YouTube. This is Alex. Um, I recently made the possibly dubious decision to purchase a Qualm Master Picking Set Kilo Lima 307. Um, it's a tooling system, in fact. Um, ordered this from one of those uh, Deal Extreme or something like that. Um, seen a number of people using them, and they seem to have some interesting shapes. And it's like 30 bucks, so for I don't know 35 picks or something. Um, so that we take a look at it. Here's the bag on the outside. It's about six inches by four inches, whatever that is in metric. It'll show up on the bottom, right. Right in there somewhere. Here. Um, so let's see what's inside. So here we are presented with the inside. I may have rearranged things a little bit. Um, I believe these tensors came with it. Um, so the first thing you notice is that there are a lot more picks than there are slots in this uh, in this little tool um, little pick case. Um, and uh, another immediate observation is that you know, they have these rubberized handles, which I'd say they're comfortable, but I don't like the feedback from them. They're a little flexy and um, numb, so you really have to end up keeping a finger kind of in contact with the metal to get good feedback, at least in my opinion. Um, but the, uh, the, the bigger problem is that the, they tend to bind, Let's see my on frame now, they tend to bind in these slots, especially when they're when you've got them full up, and uh, so I don't know what they were thinking, but um, yeah, the rubber just catches on this stuff. This is okay, so I have gone through with my um, precision Michitoyo um, thickness gauge. Um, good investment if you use such things and measured all of these picks. Now, um, I haven't counted them, but whatever. You can see there's quite a wide range of size thicknesses. Um, they've got probably a little bit of manufacturing variance. The 3.5 and 3.6 and 3.4 were kind of close and that may be due to burrs. The 2.0 and 1.9, hard to say. You've got at least three primary thicknesses here. Um, where the two eight? Oh yeah, there's the two eight. And all of those. So pretty standard thicknesses, I'd say. Um, this is my Peterson uh, diamond, which has been sanded slightly, but I'll measure it down at the base, and that's 025. The one exception is this goofy thing, which is double. Uh, it's not going to focus for me, but um, at this with this lens, but you can see there's two blades. You can hear it. Um, total thickness on that is 060, so the metal's probably 030. You know, pretty good range, nothing crazy. Um, I think these would qualify as slimline. The Peterson slimlines are, are 015, um, but some of the other slimlines are 020, so it's reasonable. Um, and uh, I did have some pretty good luck with the with one or two of these little really really thin ones, getting at some getting into some of those circuitous keyways. The kind of unfortunate thing is that the rakes, which are kind of dubious to begin with, really, really thick, so, um, and kind of a tall profile on a lot of them. So the, those are your primary rakes there for um, normal pin tumblers, and they're just, that's really thick, I think. Um, it doesn't fit in a lot of the locks that I, well in a lot of the locks that I've worked with. Okay, so these are the ones that I'm categorizing as dimple picks. Um, these are really the only ones. Um, they're that kind of curved, curved edge kind. This one, I guess, is a rake, maybe for Kaba or something. I've tried it, and it doesn't seem to do anything. You can overset all the pins, but, you know. Uh, one thing I have found it useful for is um, if you get your picks stuck in the... Uh, in a dimple lock, you can often depress all of the pins and get your pick out. And then there's this guy, which is trying to also be a dimple pick, I think. 
a rake and maybe for some really crap locks it'll work but uh, not for any of the locks that I've tried it on. The rake part of it is on the order of uh, 0.74 inches or 1.88 mil. Um, it's pretty thick for, you know, if you think about the bidding on a key. Okay, these were the only two vaguely single diamond shaped things. We're not proper rakes or auto rakes in the kit. Um, nothing special. Okay, so here are your auto jiggler rakey things. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with these. They look similar to other auto jiggler locks I've seen on, or picks I've seen online, but I don't really know much about these, so I can't judge, though some of them look kind of, oops, some of them look kind of silly to me. We have these two um, rakes. Um, one, they're the same shape as far as I'm concerned. Um, one is 0 0.28, 0 0.028 inches. The other is 0 0.020 inches. So I don't know if this is to allow them to maybe jiggle around somewhat independently in the lock. It's pretty stiff, springy. It's pretty thick material, so I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of that is. So then these are the remaining auto rake type things. Um, these two were um, similar, except that um, I think this one's a bit thicker, and this one only has one um, one bump, and that has two. I don't know what that's worth. This is really weird. First, I thought they'd put like a single Bogota in there, and when I was pulling it out, and then I realized it was together. Um, so it's like two open diamonds. Don't know how useful that's going to be. They are offset a little bit, and then two uh, closed diamonds that have pretty much the same aspect ratio. So. Don't really know what the benefit is there, but that's that. Maybe somebody can comment on the relative value of those things. So these are the ones that I'm categorizing generally as rakes. We can see them all together. We'll zoom in. So these two I'm categorizing as rakes. That's like a, a snowman or double circle, double ball. This one, you know. I guess you call it an open diamond, but it does have these two bumps here. But I'm going to call that a rake type thing. This one, which is, I don't know, it actually has a similar profile to some of this little mini snake rakes or the double hump rakes. So that might be useful for something. It's a pretty thick, that's 036, pretty thick metal on that. Got a city rake, which is actually pretty decent. Um, it's, uh, it's also 036, according to my notes. Um, this rake, which I'm not 100% sure what this is for, maybe for very, very small locks. It's, it's pretty narrow. The total height on that is only like 0 0.78, 078, or come on, 2 mil, roughly ish. So, um, pretty shallow um, so you can get in keyways but there's not a lot of variance in height on it you know maybe plus or minus ten thousandths so not exactly sure what that's good for but we'll see um, and then there's this guy which I don't know I'm gonna call it the saw um, for lack of a better term it's a I, the profile is similar to a Bogota, but not really. The, the aspect is wrong on the pumps, um, and it's really thick. I think this was the o, this was either 036 or 03. Yeah, 036. So it's the thickest metal of the the ones. Most of the rakes were pretty thick. Uh, only thing I found this useful for so far is um, like cleaning blocks by you know shove some lubricant in there and run your run this back and forth just to run the pins up and down. And it's strong, so you can just use a lot of force. Um, there was a video on that yesterday. So, um, anyhow, those are the rakes. And this, I think, is probably worth the $35 or $30 plus shipping that you pay for this kit. Um, it's a wide 
pretty wide selection of hooks. You have stuff that from a really short hook that's 019, really thin material, um, 020, same kind of shape. This one's actually softer, I don't know why. Maybe because the sh I guess the shaft is a little thinner, but you can see the springiness on there. That one's a little harder. So here's a close-up of the hooks with a with a scale there, so you can get an idea of the dimension. Um, sorry, I don't have a metric scale. Um, there's a number of these that have sort of a similar shape uh, aspect ratio. This, so this one has sort of a flatter tip on it. I don't think there's a there's no bump in it. Um, but so you could call that a lifter, or maybe it's similar to a gem. Um, and then you've got different degrees of hook angle, different thicknesses of material, shaft thicknesses. Um, come over, grab another few of these. Um, a couple more. Again, that's like a little. That's pretty stiff, but you know, flexible. This one has a another. It's a flat top, but you probably can see there's a little notch in there. Is that this one? Yeah. It's like a little notch and that'll sometimes help you grab onto a pin, um, help you locate the tip of a pin. So it's kind of, I find those handy. Uh, and then um, some more hooks. This one came with this sort of rust on it, so I don't know what's going on with that. That's not me. Um, that's a really shallow, I mean that even, you might even characterize that as a Reach diamond, I'm not sure, very shallow hook. Um, got this one, very thin, kind of flexible, um, good for getting into little spaces. And then you get into two that are really quite small. Um, I was using one of these when I picked the um, EVA DPI the other day. Um, they do, they are quite, you know, bouncy, squishy uh, when you get going on them. I and this one even wants to go sideways but you can sure weave those into those little narrow keyways. So they're the hooks. So this is the other tensor that I was talking about. I finally found it. Um, it does look kind of wide. I mean, it's what, it's probably over, over an eighth of an inch, yeah, about a little over an eighth of an inch wide. Um, but uh, it's got, here's the, the focal length on this is pretty narrow at this macro, but there's the one side and the other is a, a bit slimmer, I think a little tapered. So here's one end of this guy, so it's a little bit narrower. Um, let's get a reading on that, just on the, the end there. So it's showing about three and a half mil, 3.3 mil or um, point one, two, so about, about an eighth of an inch. And then the other end is a little broader, square. Um, and he's 0.15 inches, um, 4.03, so a half a mil difference. Um, this actually works decently for top of the keyway, and it's really strong. It gives you a very rigid feel. Um, not as good as a pry bar, but. Um, in terms of holding and, and the size, but you know, for the tensors they give you, not too bad. The other interesting tensor they give you is this one. I've not seen one of this shape before, so you know, get that thing. But then you've got this end, which is like bent over, um, and I guess that would be potentially good for top of the keyway or maybe for a, a dimple lock coming in the side. Um, so I've played with it, not been terribly impressed. But, you know, so it goes. So here's the case that comes in and took all the picks out of it. Um, it's kind of a lot of wasted space. You can't really get anything in some of these corners. This is center bit. I guess you get a tensor in there. Um, and pockets on the sides. They didn't give you anything on this side. Um, this material is some kind of pretty crappy nylon sort of stuff. Um, and uh, the zipper particularly when you have all of the picks in there. The zipper is just not very, doesn't give you that warm fuzzy feeling. Um, it's pretty clear that it's gonna break in not too distant future. Little shards of string sticking out and things like that. So I'd say overall, um, it's nice to get a, it's better than a plastic baggie um, for your picks. 
uh, that you often get. Um, and it's better than paying extra for a case, but you get what you pay for. So, um, not so impressed on the case. So I thought I'd show a little bit of fit and finish on these things. Um, depending on which pick you look at, um, some of them have some, uh, you're not going to be able to see it, but maybe a glimmer in the light, but they have some light sort of burrs from the machining process, um, which is not too impressive. Made it a little harder to get accurate readings on the thickness. Um, one thing I thought was kind of interesting, let's see if we can get a good view. So here, this, you know, it's really rough here. It's actually not too bad, and it looks like it's been ground maybe a little bit on the tip, possibly. Um, but this is stamped sheet metal. You can just tell from the the, the cut, it really looks like stamped. This other one, which maybe is a little thinner, that has the looks of laser cut. For the pick blades themselves, I would say the fit and finish is um, not as good as Peterson, but close. And I'm not a big, I think Peterson's require a good bit of tune up. Some of them are closer to South Ord in terms of being ready to use out of the box. But some of them definitely need a little work if you want to get that nice fine feel. So, again, you get what you pay for, but these are not horrible. Um, the handle is made out of, um, I guess, a medium soft rubber. Um, you can sort of see how it impressions in there. It's it's actually somewhat rigid in the in this. Well, so there you have it. The Klom Master Pick Set Tooling System, Kilo Lima 307. Um, value, good. Um, extremely cheap. You could spend this much on like three or four of the Southward Max picks. Um, on the other hand, you can buy um, some of the lower end Southward picks, which are honestly almost as good um, for two or three dollars each. Peterson's are what, like five? So, depending on what you're looking for, um, you know, I don't know that I'd recommend it as a beginner set. It's got, I think it actually has too many picks and a lot of ones that are pretty useless and um, requires a lot of uh, finishing, I think, to make some of them useful. Um, and it really doesn't have a good set of tensors uh, that gives you a broad range of options um, for, for tensioning your, your picks, I mean, tensioning your, your locks when you're picking them. So, um, but if you're just trying to add some cool stuff to your collection, um, if you're trying to get a whole bunch of hooks for a pretty low price, um, I think the hooks alone are worth the 35 bucks plus shipping. Um, so not too bad. One thing I will tell you, if you order from those, uh, the deal extreme, those deal extreme people, um, this took over a month to, to deliver, to, to get here. Um, so 
I mean, I know that you can get express mail across the world in 24 hours, but I guess they send this on a boat or something. So there you go, Klom pick set. Um, check it out, read other people's reviews, come to your own decision um, for what's right for your picking style. Anyway, this has been Alex. Thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe to my feed if you like my videos. And um, as always, have fun and keep it legal. Cheers.